A few weeks back in the Season of the Wish mid-season tuning pass, Caster Frame Sword saw a little bit of a buff. Using your heavy attack will now cost 4 rounds instead of 5, and the damage dealt by that heavy attack has been upped by 16%. Now, anytime I hear Caster Frame Swords mentioned, my brain automatically snaps to one specific weapon, Black Talon. And it has been way too long since I last picked it up. I've always viewed this sword in a very favorable light and thought it was a better option than it was often credited for. And while 16% more damage is a nice little buff for the weapon, it was the sword rework that we saw back in Season of the Witch that had a bigger impact on Black Talon's potential. So let's hop right into it, starting out with the stats and perks. Black Talon is a Void Exotic Sword that was released during the Forsaken Era of Destiny 2. For the stats, we are looking at an average swing speed, good guard resistance and endurance, with a relatively fast charge rate sitting at 65. The intrinsic trait is Crow's Wings. Pressing your aim button fires a heavy projectile attack. Heavy attacks are stronger with full energy, which is only part true now, more on that in a minute. There is no unique exotic perk for Black Talon, but it does have Tireless Blade, granting sword ammo for every other powered sword kill. And once you have the exotic catalyst unlocked, this weapon gains access to the reversal function, which does work in a similar manner to the flash counter perk that can be found on many other swords. Shots blocked immediately after guarding increase the damage of crow's wings for a very short duration. So not a whole lot going on here on the surface, but there is a lot more nuance to this sword than meets the eye. First off, all swords are fueled by two things, heavy ammo and sword energy. Light attacks only make use of the ammo, guarding only drains the energy. Heavy attacks consume both ammo and sword energy. This action now costs 4 ammo for every caster frame sword. With Black Talon, it has always cost 4 ammo, at least dating back to 2021 when I last examined the weapon, so the recent changes do put other caster frames on level footing with our exotic, at least in this respect. But rather than burning the entire sword energy meter on a cast like our legendary variants, Black Talons only consumes half, allowing for a very quick double cast by holding forward and pressing heavy attack twice. Also, legendary caster frames cannot launch a projectile from the air. Black Talon absolutely can, a huge boon to the weapon's usability. In regards to the projectiles themselves, they do possess very strong tracking and the ability to hit multiple targets if they are tightly grouped. When they make contact, the damage is shown by split identical damage values. If you hit an enemy and only see one, it's likely due to the fact they didn't have enough health to register the second damage value. But on an enemy that can take it, it's always two. Unless, of course, your sword energy is completely depleted. Now, remember back to the intrinsic trait where it stated something to the effect of projectiles deal more damage when sword energy is full? You actually just need some sword energy for this to be true, thanks to that rework that we saw back in the summer of 2023. Half, full, three quarters, an eighth, it doesn't matter. Any energy allows that projectile to hit for full damage. If you have zero sword energy, you will still be able to launch a projectile, but at greatly reduced damage. But this does mean if your sword energy is just above half, you can still launch that double heavy projectile cast with both projectiles seeing full damage. You do not need to wait for it to completely top off. For the reversal function, if you block incoming damage within about half a second of pulling up your guard, you'll have two seconds to capitalize on the awarded damage buff, which in this case is 50%. Now, this is a tight window, and in the past, it was really only Stronghold Gauntlet-wearing Titans that could efficiently capitalize on it. But here again, thanks to that rework, it is much easier for any class to pull it off. For the Sword Guard duration, the meter will drain from full to empty in 6.27 seconds, with incoming damage no longer chipping away at the sword's energy. As it fills back up, there is a 1.8 second delay before the recharge kicks in. After the fact, it jumps from empty to full in about 0.7 seconds. For the guard resistance in PvE, I don't have a good tangible way of testing it, but per Bungie, the guard should be providing somewhere between 82.5 and 95% damage reduction. So, a good bit. For Black Talon's ammo reserves, at base you can stock up to 62 total rounds, 68 with one Void Reserves mod, no additional benefit for two copies, but at three, you can pile up 69 rounds of heavy ammunition. And I really hope I effectively covered everything there. Like I said earlier, while the inspect screen is kind of light with its descriptions, there is a good bit to try to compartmentalize. Onto the Spire of the Watcher dungeon now though, to collect some more relevant damage numbers. Versus our boss Akalos, light attacks are dealing 16,509 points of damage, with uncharged heavy projectiles mirroring that damage. A charged heavy attack is dealing 49,528, and that is combining both damage values as to not muddy up the infographic too much. If you are able to get a reversal off, which is not the easiest thing to do versus a boss that doesn't shoot back, you're looking at 74,290 points of damage per projectile. About 25,000 points of damage higher than the base charged heavy with that 50% damage boost. 
For a basis of comparison, let's take a look at the old bait and switch Apex Predator with impact casing and a boss spec. On the second rocket, when bait and switch is procced, that rocket is dealing a combined 121,767 between the blast and the impact. Considerably more than a single projectile from Black Talon, even with reversal. But if you are using Black Talon for boss damage, you're probably going to double cast it any chance you get. Two back-to-back -back projectiles at base is 99,000 points of damage. With reversal, that double cast is just shy of 150,000 points of damage. So I mean, that's 27,000 points of damage higher than the bait and switch rocket. Now, this isn't a full comprehensive damage comparison, so you will have to figure out if and how each weapon fits into your loadout or damage rotation for specified encounters. But given the sheer burst damage that Black Talon can deliver, I think it's an option that's at least worth considering. If you scheme anything up, feel free to drop it down in the comments. But as we move down through the enemy tiers versus major targets, we are looking at about a 17.5% damage jump, with damage versus minors being kinda weird. It's like 26% more on a light attack, 64% more on a charged heavy, an uncharged heavy is actually dealing more damage than a light attack here. It's all over the place, I don't know. But it's probably inconsequential. We're talking about a heavy weapon versus red bars. It kills them real good. For Black Talon's PvE performance, it's a pretty solid weapon, but it does have its flaws as well. First, obviously very strong burst damage when you do get a reversal proc, for a comparable ammo cost percentage when weighed against rocket launchers. And even on an unbuffed double cast, clipping just under 100k ain't bad either. And with Black Talon in a single target damage scenario, it's hard to miss with the projectile tracking. I'm sure we've all put a rocket over the shoulder or between the legs of our target in the past, but with Black Talon, as long as you're not flinging those projectiles out into the ether, they're gonna hit, really minimizing the chance for missed damage. Plus, you don't need to reload this weapon. You are looking at about a 2.2 second cooldown window on the sword energy to really maximize your damage efficiency, but in the grand scheme of things, that's not exactly an eternity. And another thing to note, you can ignore the energy regen delay if you swap to another weapon. When swapping back, you'll still have that 0.7 second fill time, but this might open the door for some quick swap damage potential from an offhand weapon. Or just hammer away with 3 or 4 light attacks while that meter fills back up. And while the double cast is probably the big attention grabber here, a single cast can be quite useful. I kind of view it as getting the option to fire just half of a rocket. If you know that a target's at the point where it's not going to require the full fury of the weapon to finish him off, you can just throw out a single and save yourself some ammo. Plus, like any other sword, you can use Black Talon for some close range ad clearing if necessary. It might not be the best use of your heavy ammo, but with Tireless Blade you are getting around back with every other kill, so you can pop off with a flurry of light attacks every now and then, without too much concern. Then, the Sword Guard does offer a ton of damage mitigation. Even in high-end content, this allows you to eat a lot of incoming damage and live to tell about it. Great if you're looking to move to a strong position while under fire, or for getting yourself out of a bad position if you find yourself overextended. But something that I've always felt has held this weapon back to a certain extent is its overall usability. Now, on the ground level, it's not bad. It's a fairly easy weapon to pick up and get to work with. But to actually get the most out of it, Black Talon does require a certain degree of mastery. Understanding enemy tendencies and knowing when you can quick proc reversal. Gauging your time out of cover for the double cast. Knowing exactly how many projectiles it's going to take to down a target. Developing a subconscious internal clock for your sword energy meter. Being careful not to overspam your attacks, wasting ammo and damage. And having a grasp on which encounters Black Talon will or will not work well in. There's a lot to consider, there's a lot to be mindful of, and much of it isn't overly intuitive. Then comes the issue of trying to shoehorn this weapon into your boss damage rotation, which you probably could do, but many of our tried and true standbys are still working just fine. Is it worth putting in the effort and trying to kind of reinvent the wheel just to get Black Talon in there somehow? For players who are into that type of thing? Maybe, but I think most players do default to the if it ain't broke don't fix it mindset. And lastly, I do think some built in champion utility could do this weapon a lot of good. It's obviously pretty tough to proc reversal and maximize your damage against a champion that you just stunned with another weapon. And while the base damage is fine, if swords aren't supported in the seasonal artifact, it is tough to realize Black Talon's full potential in this respect. But all in all, I think Black Talon still can be a great weapon for those willing to put in the time and the effort to mastering it. On to PvP now though, starting out with a look at Black Talon's damage. We're going to see 304 points of damage dealt with a single light attack, with a heavy projectile showing for 456 points of damage. But remember, these projectiles technically do hit twice if the opposing player's health pool does allow for it. You can see here versus Mrs. Ironworker when in a roaming super, two damage values do pop at 224 apiece. 
Not really a huge factor because a one hit kill is a one hit kill, just thought you might want to know for the sake of knowing. And if you really want to deal more damage than you'll ever need, you can proc reversal, seeing a 50% damage increase here in PvP as well. How about against the two position controlling supers though? Black Talon does have the ability to down a player in a Well of Radiance with just a single heavy cast. And versus a Ward of Dawn, while the projectiles aren't going to decimate the bubble itself, if you are able to sneak in there, one heavy cast can take care of that Titan that's huddled up inside. Regarding Black Talon's performance in PvP, not a ton to speak on here, but it is quite good. You do get six rounds when pulling heavy off the wall, which is enough for two heavy projectile casts. And they basically have the ability to deal with anything that's in front of you. The tracking is strong, sometimes not strong enough to counteract my bad play, but if you can get that projectile started at a target, there's a good chance they're not going to get away from it. The heavy attacks can't hit multiple players, they'll sit down roaming supers, they give you an avenue of combating defensive supers. Black Talon's a handy weapon. The only real issue that I had was the projectile cast time, more so when on the ground than when in the air, but the animation does leave you vulnerable for a brief moment. And the projectiles do have travel time, so that does leave the window open for an opposing guardian to return fire, maybe resulting in a kill trade. And then you are spending your exotic selection on a heavy weapon that obviously has limited uptime. But if you are willing to swing it, I would definitely recommend giving Black Talon a try if you haven't recently. It's a strong and useful option that might serve you well. But that is going to do it for this one, Guardians. If you did enjoy the video, please remember to leave it a like before you go, and I'll catch you on the next one.